Hey everyone, Jennifer here, and today we're talking about inexpensive microphones. We're actually gonna take two Bauer microphones, a shotgun and a lavalier, and then we're gonna compare them to two Rode equivalents, except the Bauer microphones cost a lot less. So we're going to start with this Bauer shotgun here, which connects to the iPhone with this dongle. Ooh, ooh. Where you at, dongle? Okay, so you can actually use this on an Android if you're one of those weird people that has an Android phone, or you can use this dongle. We are going to put that up against this Rode VideoMic MEL, which has the lightning uh, connected to it. It's made for the iPhone. So similar mic. This one costs about $80, whereas the Bauer costs $15. Spoiler alert, it does work. So next, we're going to take this other Bauer mic. This is a clip-on lavalier. This is actually metal. And this goes also into your cell phone. Ooh, ooh. Wow. Oh no, autofocus works too good. So this actually goes right into your cell phone as well. So we'll need to attach a lightning connector for that for the iPhone as well. We are going to use the Rode Wireless Go or as I call it, the old standby. Now the Rode Wireless Go is a $200 microphone at the time of recording this, and the Bauer Lavalier is only $10. So let's see what they can do. Okay, so we are currently hooked into the lavalier. I'm sure there's gonna be scratching when I'm lifting up the cord. I used this the other day and I actually had pretty decent luck with it. Today I have hooked my cell phone up to the top of my camera and I'm actually just recording audio to the onboard on my SLR, mirrorless camera, and I'm recording the audio into my cell phone. It's probably gonna sound pretty bad right now <laughs> because I just did a couple tests and it was really scratchy. This microphone is probably a little bit fragile, so you're probably not gonna wanna knock it around too much. What's great about this mic is that I can conceal it a lot better than the wireless go. So you can't really see it right now, it's clipped to my shirt. I mean, it's there, you can obviously see it, but it's much more concealable. And I think that having a lavalier, people are used to seeing that. Nobody's looking at the microphone when it's clipped on like that. Also the cord, which I'm not currently concealing, but I could put it through my shirt and it's going to be fine. Some things to think about, this cord isn't that long, but if you're just trying to record yourself like this, like this on a cell phone, it's not a big deal at all. And it's not heavy and it's not on top of your phone. So if you're carrying your phone around, on like a Joby tripod. It's not heavy at all, so if you're carrying your phone around on like a, dro a Joby tripod like this, then you can just clip it onto the phone and it's hanging from here, and it's super awesome. So, what do you think about the sound quality of this? To give you a comparison, I'm going to cut the audio off the lavalier right now, and I'm gonna cut back to just the iPhone. So right now, I'm recording audio onboard into my camera, you're hearing the audio off of the iPhone, which is actually decent compared to like a really cheap mic like this lav. But um, I think that there's more room tone and the lav is a little more directional. Is it worth the $10? Is it something that you can use? I don't know. So for comparison, Rode Wireless Go. I've actually been recording on this since the beginning of the video. So everything that you heard in the introduction to this video was on the Rode Wireless Go, and you are currently hearing the Rode Wireless Go right now. Pros of this, obviously it's a nicer microphone. I did mention that it's harder to conceal. It does come with the mag clip now, so before you kind of had to go like this, clip on, which, sounds really awesome and I was really excited about it when it came out, but it's kind of like chunky. Yes, I have the chunky side on the inside, which have this clip. It actually has a metal clip on there, so you really can't see road if you don't want the white logo kind of making your, you know, distracting the camera or the person watching. Because this goes to the mag clip, so now, like this, 
I just have a magnet showing because I have the mic on the other side. I still think these are great, and this is a really good microphone for the price. You can get a lavalier through Rode for these, but for me, I'm like, I bought this because it was wireless, so now I'm adding a wire. Quality-wise, what do you guys think between the Bauer lavalier and this one? Okay, so we're back to the onboard on here and we are recording on the Bauer shotgun. Admittedly, it's quite far from me, so I will get a little bit closer in a few minutes. So this actually has a switch on it that says camera and cell phone. I don't have the cable to connect it to the camera, so maybe that's something I'll do. If we find this shotgun to be decent enough to use, I have no idea. So it's up on my cell phone a good two feet away. Maybe that's not, maybe that's not true. So this, uh, this goes right into the cell phone. It actually comes with a bracket that you can put right on top of your cell phone. Basically it goes around your phone and then you have a hot shoe on the top that you stick the microphone on, which I think is pretty cool. So again, if you're using a setup like this with the phone on here, and then you have the shotgun, attached. What do you guys think about the sound of this shotgun? I'm going to get a little bit closer so that we can see what it sounds like when I get closer. So right now I am probably three inches from the microphone. Very interested to see what that sounds like. This is about a foot away from the microphone. Okay, so we are on the Rode Video M-E-L. It is attached up on my cell phone. You can see the angles changed a little bit and that is because I had to actually take my case off of my phone. So this is kind of a drawback depending how you look at it. I cannot put this on my phone without taking the case off because as you may remember, the lightning adapter is actually connected to the microphone. So instead of having like with the dongle, I were a dongle. So with the dongle, you know, you have all this space that you can get away from your cell phone. You plug it in and you have space to the mic. But with this microphone, you only have like this teeny tiny, like three centimeter space where it plugs into your phone. So when you have a case, it just can't get all the way in there. Is it a big deal? It depends. I mean, if you spent $1,200 on an iPhone, you probably don't want to take it out of the case. Maybe you think it's safe enough if it's inside the bracket and you're holding it on the little tripod. So as far for sound, I am the same amount of distance. I think I said it was two feet from the mic. So you can compare how that sounds and then I'm gonna need a lot closer. I'm gonna talk pretty low because I'm pretty sure that I'm going to peak otherwise. Speaking of peaking, here's something that's actually kind of huge. I don't think that you can really monitor the audio levels. I'm assuming the iPhone is auto monitoring to make sure you're not peaking. Obviously, if you start screeching, you're gonna, you're gonna peak. With this microphone, you can actually listen. There is a microphone port in the back, so you can monitor. Again, even if you're monitoring, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can control anything but it does mean that you can hear it, make sure it's working, things like that. If you wanna hear what's going on, you can hear it. With the other one, there's no way to monitor the audio. You're plugging it into your phone, there's no headphone port on the phone, you can't do anything. So let's take it out so you can hear the difference. Okay, so now we're just on the iPhone audio, which honestly and arguably sounds terrible in this room because it's an echo chamber. I don't have this room made for audio whatsoever and it's a struggle right so something to keep in mind if you don't know if you are just starting out and you're watching this to think should i make an investment like this or even a ten dollar investment in a lavalier is if your room sounds like crap your audio is not going to sound a lot better however what do you guys think about the difference between just the iphone audio like say that i was doing a live on instagram and i'm in this echo chamber and i'm trying to talk to you know, clients or even just friends, whatever. And I sound like this compared to when I have this directional shotgun mic or even the lavalier, which may not be the best. 
but doesn't it sound a hell of a lot better than what it sounded like through the iPhone in this echo chamber? I'm sure it sounds a whole lot better. What do you guys think? Is it worth spending $80 on this mic? Would you rather spend $10 on the lavalier or $15 on the other shotgun? Let me know what you guys think, if this is good for people starting out or just people who want to make their production look a little bit better on their lives on Instagram and Facebook and things like that. As always, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this and got something out of it. If you're somebody who is just starting out trying to do something and you're not a videographer and you're just trying to go live and maybe sell your product or something like that, my cousin does Tori Bell lashes and I think this would be a great thing for her just to up that production value a little bit to be better than the 10 other people who are trying to do the same thing where her audience might say, I don't know why, but I just think it's better because they don't realize that she's using a microphone. So if that helped you with something like that, maybe give this video a like, subscribe if you're interested in things like this, please. Thank you very much. Check me out on Instagram at actforphoto. Thanks for watching guys.